the best smartphone of 2020 is the Apple iPhone 12. So let's talk about that. We test a lot of phones here at CNET. I reached out to our reviewers to find out which was the best smartphone of the year, and they said it's the iPhone 12. Now, I was a bit surprised by this. I know that Samsung, Google, and OnePlus make some great phones as well. So how did the iPhone 12 come out on top? Let's look at the iPhone 12 then. It's got a new design from the previous generation, and like always, it has Apple's fit and finish, meaning it's a very premium device. It has a bit of a throwback design. It looks like the iPhone 4 or 5 a little bit. But design is not everything. Just because something is beautiful does not mean much. So inside, we've got 5G. This is the first iPhone with 5G. That's great. We've got this super fast wireless network being built out in the US, and 5G is great when you go out for groceries, I guess. We've got an OLED screen. Great. Other phones have OLED. This is not a new thing. So let's talk about the camera. To no one's surprise, Apple put another great camera on the iPhone 12. This has been an area where Apple has had a huge lead for years over Android devices. Google and Samsung have made big steps over the past few years to bridge the gap between Apple's cameras and their own. But here's the thing. CNET's Patrick Holland says the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro have the best camera system you can buy on a phone right now. You might be wondering, what does Holland know about cameras? And I'll say, I'll thank you to change your tone. And this guy has been testing phones and their cameras for years. If he says the 12 has the best camera system, the iPhone 12 has the best camera system. The iPhone 12 also starts at $830 if you buy it without a carrier. It costs $799 if you get it with a carrier. So maybe now is a good time to talk about the competition. What about the Samsung Galaxy S20? That's a great phone. Like the iPhone 12, it's got an excellent camera, 5G, and an OLED screen. But then you start looking at that price tag, $999. If you want the more premium S20 Ultra, you're looking at $1,400. Also in Jessica Dahlcourt's review of the S20, she called it thick, heavy, and unrefined. Jess has had a long career reviewing phones, and if Jess says it's thick, heavy, and unrefined, that's the truth. Those three words almost never describe an Apple product, though. What about the Samsung Z Fold 2? Is it the best phone of the year? I think it might be one of the more innovative devices out there, but I agree with my colleagues that it is more of a fringe device. It's kind of difficult to suggest the Fold 2 to an average user. Well, what about the Google Pixel 5? It's the most iPhone-like of the Android phones. Google makes the hardware and it makes the software. It also has 5G OLED and a great camera system. Oh, and it's pretty inexpensive at $699. What holds the Pixel 5 back? The Android competition. You can get more power from a OnePlus 8. If you want expandable storage on the Pixel 5, that's not happening, buddy. What about 8K video recording? Not on the Pixel 5. Now note, the iPhone 12 maxes out at 4K video recording. What about my personal favorite, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra? I love the camera. I love the performance. I love writing on the screen. It's a beast of a machine, and it is pricey. It's an investment. If you don't write on the screen, there is almost no reason to pick it over the S20 line. If you're not invested in either ecosystem, Apple or Android, the iPhone 12 beats out a lot of the competition on price alone. But what about performance? As we all know, Apple knows a thing or two about building fast chips. The company is so confident about its chips. Its own Apple M1 is powering its new lineup of computers. In performance benchmarks, the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro recorded the highest scores of any phones CNET has tested. That's crazy. There's also the biggest invention of all time, MagSafe. Stick a puck on the iPhone. Woohoo! Now, if you're buying a phone because of a magnetic charger, I question a lot about your buying decisions. All right, putting the whole picture together, we've got an iPhone 12 with great specs, great fit and finish, and pretty much great everything. On the Android side, we've got an underpowered Pixel, an unrefined S20, a pricey Note, a wacky Z Fold 2. Looking at that landscape, the iPhone 12 looks pretty good this year. Will I be switching to an iPhone 12 over my Note 20 Ultra? No. Just because something is the best overall does not mean it's the best for everyone. I've been the best eye as Actar, and I'll see you online.